Greetings and welcome back, Dapplings, to From the Depths and to the Abaya, and me having launched a couple of torpedoes by accident. We are, of course, back in the campaign, but there are a few things we're going to need to do. So I'm going to pull all fleets and I'm going to have my fleets converge on the same tile while I explain what we're going to be doing in this episode. First and foremost, I am going to cover the fact that I have not upgraded my ships with the new advanced cannons, and that's for a very specific reason. I don't want to skip over the fact that they were nerfed. From what I understand, custom cannons have been nerfed, and I believe this is to encourage people to use the new shiny advanced cannons. However, I think it would be worthwhile me knowing roughly how much they have been nerfed. So the easiest way for me to do that is to use ships that I'm very familiar with in terms of how much damage they can output and see a side-by-side -side comparison effectively of what they now can uh, achieve in terms of DPS. The next thing is we are going to be building some new Sobex. Now the first thing we're going to do with that is there is a fl uh, ship in the Harbinger of Sorrow that needs to move. Goodbye, Sobek. You have served us very well, and for that reason, although you are technically not the first Sobek to be created, you're a, for all intents and purposes, you are the first Sobek. You're, you're the Sobek, and the whole class was named after you. We're going to be keeping the Sobek as a museum piece. We've upgraded it, the whole... All future Sobex, there's no reason to build the old design. We're going to be building the new design. But I don't want to just discard the old design. It has served us well. We have come this far only because the Sobek initially protected us. And the Sobek has thus earned its place. It shall be a part of the museum fleet. Now, what remains... Ooh, we've got a couple of these still. I... Ugh, okay, there's a way that I'm going to be able to fix that. I will cover that shortly. Now, we want all of these ships together. There we go, so that we can deal with this in the best way possible. We have got an Eric Martin and an Abaya. We also have the Titanic 2 with us. They are all going to be very, very busy. We're not about to be attacked, which is a good thing. Let's make sure that everything is drawn in nice and close, and then we can get to the building. Right, okay, I think this is the Abaya. Yes, it is. Let us get over there. Abaya, spawn it. Eric Martin, spawn it. Please turn off your AIs. There we go. Perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. Now, Eric Martin, you are going to be retrofit. This is the last look at the old style Sobek before I upgrade it. Well, the other one will be in, in Armok's throne for a time, but, uh, well, ev forever. But uh, this is probably the last chance you're going to see one besides the shape of a new one. We are going to be retrofitting you. Actually, it's probably going to take so long to upgrade it, you're going to forget how big this was. Ah, well. Never mind. We're just going to jump straight in and replace you. So, retrofit. Sobek Mark II. And this is going to afford me an opportunity to cover the AIs, which have all been named. But look at that cost. Ye gads. I mean, in terms of natural resources, scrap. I mean, scrap's a little bit more. It's just over 12k more, but it's not too bad. And natural resources, only about 8k more. Uh, again, not too bad in terms of the difference. Oil, only 1k more. But wow. <laughs> that's terrible. 25,000 more crystal. And uh, that's just obscene. <laughs> like, almost, almost 140,000 more metal. But, we've got to do it. It has to be done. Now is it going to start uh, being built? There we go. Fantastic. The buyer is doing its job. I approve. Now, if we uh, just get close enough that we can affect this. There we go. We're going to rename this to the HMS Eric Martin. There we go. Eric Martin, your, your ship is being upgraded and your name is preserved. Now, where is the Titanic 2? I would like to be aboard the Titanic 2. And I would definitely like the Titanic 2. Oh, it's already out of combat. Very well. That actually is very, very useful for me. Now, uh, I think it's going to be quite difficult to build this. Because I don't think there's going to easily be a way for me to keep it at arm's length. So I'm just going to go ahead and build a new Sobek. Then, the moment it starts being built, I'm going to disconnect it. So that it kind of drifts away. Are you going to do anything? Ah, there we are. Good, good, good. Right. Disconnect you. There we are. 
that should have disconnected you, and I am going to have the Titanic 2 reverse. There we go. Okay, that is good enough. Hold this position, that should be good enough for the construction of our new Sobek Mark II. Now, this Sobek is actually going to need a name. It is a brand new vehicle, so as always, anyone who uh, wants this Sobek named after them, just post a comment on this video, and I will go through the comments. It'll likely be completely random, I'll just pick one at random out of everyone who's commented, and, and that will be assigned. But uh, I'm not going to say that if you don't say something really awesome. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to say that if you do say something really awesome about the Sobex and uh, make up some sort of story about how this ship was named or something like that, that I won't give it preferential treatment. I, I'm at least being honest here, okay? If you make up some awesome, lorific story about this ship, then that is going to drastically increase your chances of having it named after you. Now... Uh, I'm gonna give it time to finish building. Oh, that's fantastic. It is actually buoyant. Oh, glorious. It's actually going together really fast. This will be the first time that you've seen the Sobek Mark II in its new design. Ooh, bad times. Turn off. Don't want you drifting away. You're actually significantly faster than any other ship in my fleet, so that would be a bit of a pain. Are the repair bots inside? Yes, they are. They're going to help putting everything together quite quickly. Uh, that one's a little little ways off. Let's see. 50 and 47. Are we about to be attacked? No. We're good for now. That's not too bad then. I could pull them out of play and just speed up time, but I kind of find it awesome to watch. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> this is beautiful. Ah, uh, look at this. All going together. I could jump aboard though, and I think I will. This is the first time you've seen the bridge section though. I have gone for a kind of tactical, stealthy bridge design for the Sobek Mark II. So there are no windows, there are no, you know, extreme embellishments. There are some embellishments. I mean, I've got lights and stuff going on. But it's generally a much more sleek, much more nondescript, um, understated design compared to my usual bridge designs. And that, I think, goes in with the, the really sleek, um, low-profile design of the Sobek Mark II. I'm really, really liking the look of the bridge. But there's a little bit of a surprise inside. For anyone who hasn't been keeping up with me on Twitter and thus hasn't been seeing the infrequent uh, pictures that I've been posting of the Sobek and its redesign, it will be brand new to you. Let's uh, just check out how is the fleet doing as a whole. If we go to fleets, I can I only see that. Okay, the Sobek Mark II is actually 89% of the way there. Probably because I'm so close, actually. Now, one thing I've actually done is I've pulled out all of my points from Engineer so I could see the overall output of the engine. It was in the 2000 range, so I've decided not to use shields on it. And the reason why I've decided not to use shields while I put all of this back in, I mean, as well, is that the Sobek Mark II is really designed to stay at extreme range from the enemy, so I don't think it's as necessary for it to have shields over my other vessels. So... With that in mind, I've just foregone shields altogether. Now let's jump onto the Sobek Mark II. There we go. Now, when I jump inside, we're going to see exactly what this bridge looks like. Bonk. There we go. It's kind of eerily illuminated. And th these are lights that are below deck, actually. Down here. I've got red lights on the inside where the missile system is. Because I th just thought it would look awesome when this pops open that all of the uh, deployable um, kind of missile bunkers will have red light streaming out. Very, very, you know, battle stations-esque. But in here, it does seem to shine through a little bit, so it casts the uh, picture of Sobek in rather awesome, eerie glow. That is Sobek, the, the crocodile god of Egyptian mythology, after which the Sobek class was named. I could think of nothing more fitting to put on a picture in the bridge of the Sobek, but... Here we go. We have got the navigation AI, Ahmed. We have down here the cruise missile AI, Titus. We have the anti missile AI, Mega Hamster. The torpedo AI, Dami A. And finally, we have the anti air AI, Obalgus. 
This will be true of all of the Sobex. The AIs will always be named the same thing. I'm not going to have different AIs across different ships. It would just take far, far too long for me to uh, collate all of the different names and, and put them in ships and remember what those names were in case I had to retrofit it and all that kind of malarkey. So uh, we're going to be going the lazy route and all of the AIs in a specific class are always going to be named the same thing. But I hope you are excited to have your names in the game let's see it looks like eric martin is almost finished let's see have we got anyone coming to fight us yet no we do not well that's a little bit of a disappointment honestly i kind of wanted them to fight me right well that does give me an opportunity to, to have a look at where are we i would like to be aboard the titanic mark ii now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna save this titanic mark ii Save constructible in instances. There we go. I would like to save it there. It has changed since last saved version. Uh, oh, actually, is the Titanic Mark II not? Does the Titanic Mark II not have the deployables? <gasps> it does not. Oh, okay. Well, that's uh, fair enough then. I will be across on the Abaya then. There we go. Now, the Abaya needs to be saved for the same reason. We're going to go ahead and save it over this. It has not changed since the last time saved. Now, I think this will actually help a couple of people suggested this is a fix for the 10 out of 10 lifetime automatic spawns what i can do is apparently retrofit it to itself so let's see if that'll work go ahead and retrofit shouldn't do anything and make sure it's all turned off has it still got 10 out of 10 ah oh, drat it does Ah, oh, that's rather unfortunate. Maybe I've actually saved it as 10 out of 10. We'll easily be able to check that by jumping over to the, uh, let's see, the Titanic 2. And if this spawns these spawners in at 10 out of 10, then I know that this system isn't going to work. The HMB Titanic 2. We're going to refit that to the Abaya. There we go. And then we'll have a quick look. And 0 out of 10 there. Mm. Well, I mean, I guess. I guess it does work. HMB. There we go. There we are. HMB Titanic 2. And we can go ahead and save that constructible over the Titanic 2 blueprint there. And resume game. Well, at least you've been set up. It is kind of an annoyance that I'm going to have to do it all all the time. Let me just grab that. S3 Harms AA on one side, and the other one will just be S3 Harms, I imagine. Either that or S3 Harms. Oops. Torp. S3 Harms underscore turret. Very well. Okay, well, I'm going to pop over to the Abaya. We are going to quickly adjust this. The easiest way for me to do this is simply remove that and build it back in. It is quite frustrating that I have to go through this rigmarole every time, but oh well. Uh, we want, oops, that's not what we want to do. We want to push this all the way up to 30, hold until 100% built, I guess, and then paste that in. Uh, there we are. Okay. Spawns to preserve, all of them. Select the limit to the number of constructibles that this spawner will keep in existence and in play. That is good enough. And then the other, we just need to grab turret. Then replace it. I don't want to have to do this after every single battle. For obvious reasons, it's just going to be really annoying. But for now, we'll just get that all set up. Okay, we should be ready to go. Okay, we've got an attack fleet coming in, but I want to actually engage something a little bit larger. So let's pull everything out of play. And let's move our fleet. Hmm. We're going to position you about there. And you can move to engage. With this, I'm going to have the Harbinger of Anguish engage from afar. In fact, you're almost close enough, I would say. Uh, I'll just have you engage it from about there, I think. Let's move in nice and close. 
So back mark two. Let's make sure you're there. You're really the the main main star of this battle. We'll position our avatars ready, but it's the Sobek that we're going to want to watch. So let's make sure we're aboard the Sobek. Now the Sobek, in the last time we saw it, had its AI turned off. One of the things I've included with this design is that the Sobek should immediately turn its AI to combat if there are any enemies present. As you can see, it's already turned itself onto combat mode. Now that is what we like to see. Some initiative. And goodbye, cruise missiles. I mean, I really, at this point, I should just go and watch. Whee! Because this fight is likely to be over long. Oh, wow, that's actually engaging from an incredible distance. Sobek might actually be in a little bit of trouble without those shields. Maybe I should stick one just above the cruise missile system. But the Sobek, as you can see, is already starting to turn, and that's because it's entered a reasonable distance. Basically, the Sobek will always try to keep its enemies at its maximum in the gauge range. Or, well, not as maximum, but kind of the optimum. It'll try to close in to about 2,750 meters. At that point, it will change direction and will start trying to circle at 90 degrees. So it's not trying to approach, not trying to move away. It's just trying to keep its opponent at 90 degrees and just circle around it because at that range, it's probably going to outrange most enemies. Its cruise missile system is set to prioritize larger opponents, so the more blocks it has, the more attractive it is as a target for the cruise missiles. Cruise missiles also have torpedo propellers. Only one, but it means that in this instance, these can still get to their target. They've dipped into the water, but that's fine because they've just switched to their torpedo propulsion system, and they're moving in for the kill. Very, very large high-powered torpedoes at this point. There we go. Some nice damage going on here. Let's see if we can do some more damage in there. It looks like one AI is already dead. Very nice work indeed. And more and more coming through. Let's see the damage. It's the Fenicus, 97%. The Tick Bee, 100%. It's fine. But they've already gone back into the drink. But... Looks like the avatars are in range. I can hear a lot of firing going on. Yes, there we go. Let's see how much damage goes on here with the explosive shells. Uh, it seems... Well, maybe it's a little bit less potent, but... I'm not sure. It seems to be doing just as well as it usually did. Just harassing it with ridiculous amount of small explosions just to sh uh, remove the cladding and the weapon systems off the vehicle and too damaged looks like the cruise missiles are now engaging oh they're still going over there but the looks of it no here they come oh wow health below 80 percent and sinking what is sinking oh the harm turrets ah yes of course they've been deployed and they're repairing themselves uh, all is well. Okay, well, the Sobek did fantastically well there. Cruise missiles doing enormous amounts of damage. You'll notice that the cruise missiles were the only things engaging there. And I'll quickly cover why that is. Down here, the cruise missiles will engage at their maximum range of 3.5k. That corresponds to... Ooh, let's get over here. I can't quite have it try to maintain 3.5k, so what happens is above 3,000 meters, it'll close to broadside. It enters broadside at 2,750 meters, which is generally going to be outside the range of most enemies. It'll try to circle, as I described. Below 2,000 meters, it's going to break and try to leave. It doesn't want to be close to any target. Its main strength is being able to kill things at extreme range, so that makes sense. Now. The torpedo systems are designed only to engage things when they're closer than 2,000. Or rather, at 2,000, they'll start firing. I don't want these firing all the time because they'll drain the ammo reserves, which will slow down my cruise missiles firing. These are more of a deterrent. If something is faster than the Sobek, which some things will be, though nothing in the Onyx watch is likely to be faster than the Sobek, then the torpedoes will try to dissuade it by uh, launching lots and lots of torpedoes 
and just hopefully damaging the propulsion system. They target things which have got more engines and are faster first. The anti-missile missile system and the anti-air system, they attack at about 800. I think the anti-air actually attacks, attacks at out to 1,200. It's a little bit um, modified design, can reach a little bit further out. But generally speaking, the Sobek will try to keep things at extreme range so it can just rely on its cruise missiles to take them down. But that battle went fairly well for us, I think. Let's pull all of my ships. Um, the harms, I'm afraid. You need to be gone. Goodbye. Also, goodbye. We really didn't need those. I'm probably not going to bring the Abayas into uh, fighting for now. Goodbye, Harms Turret. And... <gasps> what did I just delete? No, I didn't delete the Harms Turret. I deleted one of the Avatars. <laughs> oh, scary wax. Uh, <laughs> I think I deleted the tick brief. <laughs> well, poo. <laughs> that was a mistake. Huh. I, well, I'm a derp, but honestly, that's probably fine for now. I will rebuild the Tickbury, <laughs> but the Tickbury will probably be one of the first rebuilt avatars with the advanced cannons. Ultimately, I need to get them all uh, redone anyway. So let's get into position here and try to take out this fleet. I would like you, I would love a new Argus around here, actually. So how about... Let's get you there. I'm going to move over here, get the Titanic loaded in. There we are. And I would like it if you would construct for me an Argus. We're going to need a name for this Argus satellite as well. Let's get that out in the sky. Load it in. There we go. All the way down there. Now, so the, there will be two ships that need names, so if you have a preference over one of them and you're posting specifically to get your name into the series, then do let me know which you're most interested in having. The Argus Recon Satellite. Oh, it looks very different now that the wood textures have changed. Or the Sobek Mark II. That is good enough, I think. Release the satellite. And we'll continue repairs. Also, please stop going anyway. In fact, reverse a little bit. Would you please reverse? No? Reverse. There we go. Perfect. Dunk. There we are. Right, we'll get this built fairly quickly. In fact, if we uh, come out here, then what I can do, and it'll be a little bit better, is just tell this to be repaired. And everything should actually repair. In fact, wow, the Sobek Mark II has only slightly less repair power than the type than the Abaya class. That is unintended, but very much welcome. You get. Okay, well the Argus is getting ready. We'll go ahead and release that now. Up to its maximum height. We'll just go in there and spawn it in. There we go. We'll also take the Argus out of this fleet. It needs to be on its own. There we are. Glorious. I would like you to be repaired. Ah, uh, it's been a little while since I've moved up here. I really need to get a better seat than in amongst all of the engines. That's a little bit dumb. But it is very, very convenient to, to put there. Uh, the, the white lasers, I think, really complement the Argus. But there we go. The first stage lift the balloons have been decoupled and it is now running on its ion thrusters instead it should easily be able to get up into the upper atmosphere and while it's climbing there we go we can see a lot we've got quite a few people to conquer uh, though with the sobex and i'm probably going to build a couple more in the next episode I suspect we're going to have a relatively easy time of it. Though it was interesting to see that the Onyx Watch did engage from quite far away with their cannons. The Sobek does not have a huge amount of defense. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that. I'm not going to start adding shields yet, but I can think of one place where one shield at least would be 
a good thing to add. But that's going to be it for this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it and will be joining me for the next. But until then, and as always, let's have a nice, nice shot as we ascend to the heavens from the Argus. Do take care.